Rudolf Virchow, a German pathologist and biologist, stated in Latin, Omnicellula is cellula, which means cells come from pre-existing cells. The process of cell division is one of the most important biological processes. Do you even wonder how you grow? Perhaps the immediate answer that you will give is that you grow because you eat. Our body cells use the energy that we get from the food that we eat. This energy allows the cells to divide and so we grow. The process of cell division is also true for prokaryotic cells like bacteria. The process of cell division that occurs in all bacteria is called binary fission. What is the significance of cell division to all living things? This video lesson will focus on the detailed process and importance of cell division. Let us have a review of what we have learned last time. True or false? The alimentary canal is a muscular tube which extends from the esophagus to the anus. If your answer is false, then you are correct because the alimentary canal extends from the mouth to the anus. Next, the villi increases the surface area for the absorption of the digested food. If your answer is true, then very good. Next, the liver makes a digestive juice called bile that helps digest fats and some vitamins. The answer is true. Next, when we eat, the stomach contracts and squeezes to send bile into your digestive tract. If your answer is false, then correct. Because every time that we eat, it is our gallbladder that contracts and squeezes to send bile into our digestive tract because the gallbladder is the structure or the gland that stores bile. On this video lesson, we will compare mitosis and meiosis and their role in the cell division cycle and explain the significance of meiosis in maintaining the chromosome number. Did you know that you began as a single cell called a zygote? The zygote is the product of the union of your father's sperm cell and your mother's egg cell. It is but one-tenth of a millimeter. So how did you reach the size you now have? Did you also know that 28 days from now, every single layer of skin that covers your body will all be gone? Replaced by a set of completely new ones. For multicellular organisms like you, cell division which causes an increase in cell number can lead to growth or repair of damaged body parts. For unicellular organisms like protozoa and simple algae, cell division is a form of asexual reproduction that produces new individuals. Before we study cell division thoroughly, let us review some of the cell organelles that are needed in cell division and scramble the following terms related to cell structure. The first letter of every word is already in its proper location. I hope that you can still remember your previous science subject about the cell parts and function. This will help you understand our topic, which is something to do with cellular division. Alright, our answers. 
cell wall, nucleus, cytoplasm, mitochondria, and the plasmic reticulum and lysosome. These are some of the organs and organelles of the cell. So let's take a look again on uh, this uh, diagram of uh, a plant cell and an animal cell. To familiarize yourselves about the organs and organelles of the cell, specifically the organs involved in cell division like the nucleus, the nucleolus, the centrioles. Cells go through a cycle of alternating stages of division and rest from division. This is called the cell cycle. The non-dividing stage, which is devoted largely to cell growth, is called interphase. Most actively dividing cells spend some 90% of their time at this stage. When cells divide, two parts may be involved, namely the nucleus and the cytoplasm. Before cell division can happen, a cell undergoes an important process of preparing itself before dividing. The said preparation time of a cell is referred to as interphase. A cell in interphase will undergo the following, increase in the number of organelles, increase in size, and most importantly, the replication of DNA. Interphase is a part of the cell cycle checkpoint that directs a cell when to proceed or to stop dividing. A cell cycle is a series of events that takes place in a cell as it grows and divides. A cell spends most of its time in what is called interphase, and during this time it grows, replicates its chromosomes, and prepares for cell division. The cell then leaves interphase, undergoes mitosis, and completes its division. How often do cells divide? Some cells complete this cycle of interphase and mitosis within 24 hours while others may take years before they go through the process of cell division. The cells at the apical meristem of an onion root divides every 20 hours. The epithelial cells in your intestine divide once every 10 hours. What changes occur in each stage of the cell cycle? Remember that interphase is the stage between two consecutive cell divisions. Interphase includes three phases as follows. One is GAP1 or G1 phase. The first stage of interphase is called the G1 phase or first GAP because from the microscopic aspect, little change is visible. However, during the G1 stage, the cell is quite active at the biochemical level. It is the period when the cell increases in size in preparation for cell division. RNA and proteins including enzymes needed for making DNA are synthesized. Now let us have the S phase or the synthesis phase. It is the period during which DNA is synthesized and chromosomes are replicated. Each strand of uh, the double-stranded chromosomes produced is called a sister chromatid. The cell synthesizes a complete copy of the DNA in its nucleus. It also duplicates a microtubule organizing structure called the centrosome. The centrosomes help separate DNA during M phase. Next is we have gap or G2 phase is the period when the cell continues to synthesize RNA and proteins and increase in size. The final preparation of the cell where it double checks the genes in the DNA of the replicated chromosomes. So the interphase mainly involves in the growth of the cell for DNA replication and for cell functions. The cell cycle is 90% interphase, 10% mitosis proper. Although DNA synthesis is confined to a narrow window at S phase, 
the synthesis of organelles occurs throughout interface. Thus, before division, the cells grow to their characteristic adult size. After division, the cells may go through G1 to prepare for the next division. Or, they may go into an arrested, quiescent stage known as G0 state to differentiate. Some cells, such as nerve cells and blood cells, remain in G0 all their lives. The time required for a specific cell to complete the cell cycle depends on its complexity. For example, intestinal cells divide every 10 hours, while skin cells divide for several days. Mitotic Cellular Division or Mitosis A process of cell duplication or reproduction during which one cell gives rise to two genetically identical daughter cells. Mitosis involves the following stages. We can use the letters P, M, A, and T to memorize the correct sequence of mitosis wherein P stands for prophase, M stands for metaphase, A stands for anaphase, and T stands for telophase. Prophase is when chromosomes coil up into a rod-shaped structures, nucleoli and nuclear membrane disappear, and spindle fibers form. The double-stranded chromosomes are formed while the nuclear envelope starts to disappear. Centrioles are doubled and move towards the opposite poles of the cell. Next, we have the metaphase. Metaphase involves the alignment of double-stranded chromosomes at the equatorial plate with the kinetochores attaching the chromosomes to spindle fibers. Nucleolus and nuclear envelope disappear completely. Each chromosome receives spindle fibers from the pair of centrioles which are attached to the kinetochores. Chromosomes align to the central metaphase plate or the equatorial plate. Next is anaphase. It begins with the division of the centromeres and ends with the migration of the single-stranded chromosomes to the poles. The double-stranded chromosomes separate, or what we call the centromere breakage, and move to the direction of the centrioles. A cleavage furrow is produced to the opposite pole of the centrioles. An appearance by which the cell is about to be torn apart. Now, let us give some explanation to some of the difficult terms. The first one is the genes. These are segments of the uh, deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA that contain the code for a specific protein that functions in one or more types of cells in the body. Chromosomes are structures within cells that contain a person's genes. Genes are contained in chromosomes, which are in the cell nucleus. Remember that chromosomes is like a can of DNA. The centromere is a specialized DNA sequence of a chromosome that links a pair of sister chromatids, or a dyad. And chromatid is one of the two identical halves of a replicated chromosome. And finally, we have the telophase. Telophase is also known as reverse prophase. Since it involves the uncoiling of chromosomes, reappearance of the nucleoli and nuclear membrane, and disappearance of the spindle fibers. When spindle fibers disappear, it releases the chromatids, while nuclear envelope and nucleolus reappear. Centrioles and all organelles are distributed in each daughter cell. Complete separation of the cytoplasm produces two identical diploid daughter cells. Cytokinesis is the final event of the cell cycle and is the process that divides one cell into two daughter cells. 
Cytokinesis in plant cells involves the formation of a cell plate that eventually develops into the cell wall and the middle lamella. Cytoplasmic division in animal cells, on the other hand, occurs with the formation of a cleavage furrow. Sometimes, nuclear division is not followed by cytoplasmic division in a cell with two nuclei, called binucleated cell, is formed. Many cells of the human liver are binucleated. If there are repeated nuclear divisions without cytoplasmic division taking place, then a cell with many nuclei, called a multinucleated cell, is formed. The cells of your skeletal muscles or the skeletal muscle fibers are multinucleated. Mitosis has four stages. Prophase, which begins with the disappearance of the nuclear envelope, Metaphase, where chromosomes align at the metaphase plate or the equatorial plate. Anaphase, which separates the double-stranded chromosomes to individual chromatid. And telophase, which separates the nuclei and cytoplasm of resulting diploid daughter cells. Let's summarize what we have learned so far about mitosis. Mitosis is a way of making more cells that are genetically the same as the parent cell. It plays an important part in the development of embryos, and it is important for the growth and development of our bodies as well. Mitosis produces new cells and replaces cells that are old, lost, or damaged. Let us now discuss about meiosis, preparing for sexual reproduction. The body cells of man have diploid chromosome number, that is 2n equals 46 chromosomes. Since the zygote is formed from the union of two sex cells, you might think that the chromosome number after fertilization is doubled. You might also think that since sexual reproduction proceeds from generation to generation, the chromosome number in the human species would increase without limit through time. But this never happens. Each species has a constant number of chromosomes per cell, generation after generation, even when the organisms are sexually reproducing. Why? This is because the sex cells that unite during fertilization have haploid chromosomes number. Each sex cell in humans has 23 chromosomes only. How did this happen? The sex cells are produced through a type of nuclear division that reduces chromosome number to half of that of the parent cell. This reduction division is called meiosis. Meiosis involves two consecutive divisions, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Thus, a cell that divides by meiosis produces four new daughter cells. Generally, the process of dividing cell in mitosis and meiosis are similar. However, the mechanism is different in meiosis. Unlike in mitosis, meiosis divides cell with diploid pairs of homologous chromosomes to produce four daughter cells with haploid chromosomes. Meiosis has two important stages of division. Meiosis 1 or reduction division and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 concentrates on reducing the diploid chromosomal number to haploid, while meiosis 2 focuses on producing four daughter cells, each carrying haploid chromosomes. When a cell finishes gap phase 2, it can proceed to the process of meiosis. Remember that meiosis is intended for the production of gametes or sex cells.
The figure shown on the screen is the process of meiosis. The figure uses three diploid homologous pair of chromosomes. But in reality, remember that 23 diploid homologous pairs are involved in meiosis. Note that in counting the chromosomes, we take homologous pair as diploid, sister chromatid as haploid in meiosis, and chromatid or single-stranded chromosome as haploid also. Production of chromosomes number to half happens during meiosis 1. How? Note that in prophase 1, homologous chromosomes pair up. This is called synapsis. At this time, exchange of material may occur through the process referred to as crossing over. Centrioles move towards the opposite poles of the cell. The nuclear envelope is starting to disappear. Diploid sister chromatids find their homologous pair forming diploid homologous pairs of chromosomes. Notice that each pair of chromosomes is very attached to each other. This formation of homologous pair of chromosomes is referred to as tetrad, where they will undergo the process of crossing over or the process of exchanging genes in each of their locus. This will enable the chromosomes to have varied sets of genes. Have you ever noticed that, at metaphase 1, each pair of homologous chromosomes attached to the single fiber? The nuclear envelope and the nucleolus disappear completely. Centrioles produce spindle fibers. These spindle fibers will attach to the kinetochore of the homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes align to the metaphase plate or the equatorial plate. In the figure, you can see that the loci or the arms of each sister chromatid vary in color because they obtained different but the same set of gene from their homologue during crossing over. During anaphase 1, one double-stranded chromosome in the pair moves to one pole while the other double-stranded chromosome in the pair moves to the opposite pole. Anaphase 1 reduces the diploid homologous number of chromosomes to haploid. Centrioles pull each diploid homologous pair to opposite poles of the cell. Haploid sister chromatids are formed. Cleavage furrow becomes visible. At telophase 1, two nuclei are produced, each containing only half the chromosome number of the original parent cell. Spindle fiber disappear, nuclear envelope and nucleoli reappear. Complete separation of cytoplasm and organelles with two haploid daughter cells. Immediately after telophase cytokinesis 1, meiosis 2 will begin. There is no interface stage, so chromosomes and DNA will not be replicated. Thus, the cells maintain their haploid chromosomal number. In meiosis 2, the target of the cells is to divide like the mechanisms observed in mitosis. Meiosis 2 is similar to meiosis 1. In prophase 2, nuclear envelopes start to disappear. Nucleoli are still visible. Centrioles are doubled. In metaphase 2, each haploid chromosome receives spindle fibers from the centrioles which are attached to the kinetochores. Haploid chromosomes align to the central metaphase plate or the equatorial plate. In anaphase 2, haploid chromosomes separate or the centromere breakage and move to the direction of the centrioles. A cleavage furrow is produced due to the opposite pool 
of the centrioles, an appearance by which the cell is about to be torn apart. In telophase 2, spindle fibers disappear, releasing chromatids, while nuclear envelope and nucleolus reappear. Complete separation of each cytoplasm in organelles forming four haploid daughter cells. The four daughter cells containing haploid chromosomes are ready to become four sperm cells in the testes of males or three polar bodies and one egg cell in the ovary of females or what we call as gametogenesis. There are two types of gametogenesis in human beings. The first is spermatogenesis which is responsible for the production of sperm cell in males, while oogenesis is the process of making mature egg cells in females. So we have here the summary or the diagram of the processes involved in meiosis II. What then is the significance of the reduction of chromosome number during meiosis? It allows the formation of haploid gametes. It ensures that, even after fusion of gametes, the chromosome number of the zygote or the offspring remains the same as the diploid chromosome number of the parents. Thus, reduction division makes possible the maintenance of a constant chromosome number in a species generation after generation. Stem cells are found in eukaryotic organisms that can divide through mitosis and differentiate to become cells with specific identity and physiology. It can be harvested in the blastosis of embryos and progenitor cells of adults. Researchers found that these cells can be grown artificially. Cultured cells are now used for medications and organ replacements. Let's summarize what we have learned about meiosis. Meiosis is cell division for reproductive cells. It has two important stages, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 reduces the homologous diploid cells to haploid. Meiosis 2 is responsible for the formation of four haploid daughter cells. You can watch this video lesson as many times as you want before you proceed with a quiz. At this point, let's check your understanding. Number 1. As a result of mitosis, each of the two new cells produced from the parent cell during cytokinesis, A receives a few chromosomes from the parent cell, B receives an exact copy of all the chromosomes present in the parent cell, C donates a chromosome to the parent cell, D receives exactly half the chromosomes from the parent cell. Number 2. Crossing over may occur during which phase of meiosis 1? A. Prophase 1 B. Metaphase 1 C. Anaphase 1 D. Telophase 1 Number 3 During meiosis, the resulting gametes have blank the number of chromosomes as the parent cell A. Double B. Triple C. Half D equal Number 4 Which of the following is a correct statement about the events of the cell cycle? A. Little happens during the G1 and the G2 phases B. DNA replicates during cytokinesis C. The M phase is usually the longest phase D. Interphase consists of the G1, S, and the G2 phases. Number 5. Which of the following is not a correct statement about the events of the cell cycle? 
A. Mitosis is usually the longest phase. B. DNA replicates during S phase. C. Cell division ends with cytokinesis. D. The cell grows during the interphase. Number 6. What is the correct order of the stages of mitosis? 1. Metaphase, 2. Telophase, C. Anaphase, 4. Prophase A. 4, 1, 2, 3 B. 3, 2, 1, 4 C. 1, 3, 2, 4 and D. 4, 1, 3, 2 Number 7. Which uses meiosis? A. Spermatogenesis B. Repairing of wounds C. Growth D. Replacement of dead cells Number 8. What significant event happens in meiosis 1 aside from the reduction of the number of chromosomes? A. Synapsis B. Tetrad formation C. Segregation D. Centromere breakage Number 9. Which terms are incorrectly matched? A. Prophase 1 synapsis B. Interphase DNA replication C. Cytokinesis cell plate formation D. Metaphase centromere division And number 10. The type of cell division that produces gametes and prepares the organism for fertilization during sexual reproduction is called blank. A. Mitosis B. Meiosis C. Synapsis D. Cytokinesis Alright, let us have the answers. For number 1, the answer is letter B receives an exact copy of all the chromosomes present in the parent cell. Number 2, number 3, number 4, number 5, number 6, number 7, number 8, number 9, and number 10. Thank you for watching this video lesson. See you again next time for another science topic.